Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, an inspired conversation space between Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner on the journey of motherhood through the common thread of parenting, relationship, and sexuality as a path to consciousness. We keep our conversations honest, our experiences real, and our philosophies exploratory. We believe that in order to raise incredible humans, we first have to raise ourselves. We know that in order to rock the family, you've got to nourish the mother. If you are here, you care about paving a path of conscious and intentional motherhood, connected with yourself and your gifts, and also illuminating your children in theirs so we may raise more whole humans who can impact this world in a more humane way. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively, head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And for all live streamed, pre release podcasts and all our free content, head over to our free Facebook group, Nourishing the Mother with Bridget Wood and Julie Tenner. We are Julie Tenner and Bridget Wood, and we are so grateful you're here. Hello and welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Bridget Wood. And I'm Julie Tenner. And today's podcast is you don't have to have the answers. You just have to be willing to feel into it. And it comes off of a magnificent post that you, Bridgie, wrote that speaks to the hearts and minds of so many to the point where your post has gone viral. Mm. And so what we would love, what that just says is that it's such a collective resonance in the words and the heart and the feeling and the vibration of that post so we would all really love for you to read it to us and then just put yourself in that moment as you're contemplating it and writing it and where that kind of came from within you Mm. yeah okay I'll read it first and then we'll pull it apart so the first kind of tile image says while I tuck my children into their warm beds another mother with dwindling food supplies, is preparing her children's beds in a subway bomb shelter. Newborn babies are waking to the sirens of war. Make it make sense. And then I go on to say, the juxtaposition I'm posting in my stories today feels particularly jarring. The devastating news coming out of Ukraine, then my toddler helping me wash the car. Russians protesting their government my other daughter's first little love notes to her bestie. The tears and the privilege, the overwhelm and the responsibility. Mind and heart there and here. And still we must feed our children, tend our home and our work. Holding on to our own vision while opening our hearts wide enough to feel the ache of humanity and give whatever we can in thoughts, deeds or money. Resisting intellectualising or having all the answers sending love to all who need it right now. Mm. And so that came up because that day I obviously posted my stories and I was about to go to bed and I was exhausted on Friday night and I thought, no, I can't, I can't leave this unsaid. It just, I feel like this needs to be said because otherwise I'm just giving a cursory glance at something that's, you know, pretty horrific that's unfolding on the other side of the world. And so I thought, no, I'm going to, I'm going to write this post. And so I write it and put it up, go to bed, wake up. And it's been shared hundreds of times. And I think we're two or three days later now, and it's been shared over a thousand times and it's still circulating. And I think what that says is that we don't need to be an expert in geopolitics. We don't need to have read every conspiracy theory. We don't need to know who's right and who's wrong and who's the hero and who's the villain. We just need to listen to that our hearts and that part of us that feels the humanity of another and can, you know, put our children to bed in a country relatively safe and with a roof over a head that, you know, the house that likely is not going to be invaded tomorrow. And we take all of that for granted. And it just, I think we know this intellectually, but I think when we have an experience of witnessing what's happening and what's unfolding in Europe at the moment, 
it brings it all home and it can be really easy to let the overwhelming nature of it um, mean that you don't want to engage because Mm. it's too much. But I think on some level we need to have a foot in it or, you know, some part of ourselves touch into that kind of experience of another and be reminded of our privilege, be reminded of our responsibility that comes with that privilege in terms of how we use this one precious life, the way we've been born into a country that's, you know, largely democratic, and also with the way that we raise our children. Mm. And I think if we don't confront ourselves with the uncomfortable like this, then we miss those opportunities. And I think that's what this is. It's an opportunity. Mm. So when we scan over so many of the comments that readers have left on your post, what seems to come up over and over again is what a struggle it is to be able to hold that knowledge and open yourself into seeing it, reading it, hearing about it, looking. Yeah. And the struggle between being able to hold that in a human heart and body and then almost do what your post is talking about, which is transpose that experience onto your own life and your own children and then have this struggle between, as your post said, I can't even make it make sense. I can't, I can't place it. I'm having, I'm ping ponging. I'm having trouble being there and here and I can't regulate and be present yeah. Yeah. In my life and with just the horrors that are taking place. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do you find how do you find yourself able to do that? Um, with this, this is where I become acutely aware of my media consumption because this kind of, you know, any kind of big media event which a war is which COVID is and was can become addictive you know our brains can kind of hit like this we want to get our fix with the latest update right even if we can do nothing about it and so I think the dance with something like this is finding out just enough to be aware but not so much that you're kind of going down a rabbit hole of you know conspiracy theory or who's right and who's wrong or, you know, just the morbid nature of watching violence unfold, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's just becoming very aware of how your behaviour is being shaped by this so that you can Mm -hmm. become boundaried. What do you mean about that or by that, how your behaviour is being shaped? (coughs) Because once you start looking at these articles at the footage coming through you know and like I know TikTok's like not that I'm on TikTok but lots of stuff's getting reshared from TikTok you could just sit there for hours just watching what's coming out because it's unfolding in real time and be able to ask yourself how is this of benefit to me and my family and my vision for what's important to me and to us versus you know, how meaningful it is to me to dedicate that time there. Like, Mm. is it helping the cause by me endlessly consuming this? No, because I'm not actively doing anything in response to it. I'm just getting further and further into my own sense of helplessness and lack of control because we don't have control and influence over it, right? Mm. I think it's important to look at in the context of issues like these, like what is my circle of influence? Mm. and taking in just enough information for it to be meaningful to your circle of influence and no more because your circle of influence is your family, your community, your business, you know, whatever that looks like for you. And so there's a responsibility to have some level of awareness for your own sense of well-being and for your family vision and for what you want to communicate to your children and maybe combat any misinformation that they're getting but beyond that I think we just need to be careful 
like any kind of you know media consumption of is this helpful or is this mm. harmful is this adaptive or maladaptive now yeah I love that is this helpful and adaptive or is this unhelpful and unadaptive is that what you said yeah and also oh, we've right. got to remember we've got to remember too like so much of the world now if you give the last two years we're operating in a stress response mm. like our nervous systems for it's many pinging. of us it's pinging mm. so covid's kind of on the you know like kind of it's peaked right like kind of we're coming off like the the drip the daily drip of the daily numbers, right, which pe- some people have become very hooked on um, in terms of their nervous systems and the stress, like, you know, like cocktail that that brings up. And so you can be looking for the next thing. What's the next, like, little stress cocktail? You know, well, basically the stress cocktail that's already existing in me, what's the next hit I can get to get those same feelings and it's often unconscious like that but that neurochemistry as has been set up for you know months and months if not years Mm. and so we also need to be mindful that we're not allowing this to take up that kind of space Mm. this podcast is brought to you by honey club and reimagining motherhood your space is for intimacy and feminine embodiment and conscious parenting and inspiring motherhood. Come join us at juliettanner.love and bridgetwood.life. I also love that one of the posts or one of the comments on your post was really just talking around how what she got out of your post and what she was resonating with was how to keep your heart open. Mm at a time like this, rather than allowing or living with your privilege disassociating you Mm. from the lived experience of others and Mm. you do that kind of shut down, close down, switch off, it's too hard, I can't know about it, I haven't got the energy, blah, 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 Mm. insert the privilege that you have to be able to disassociate. Yeah. 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 Which I in I was at Coffee with Mums this morning and that was the narrative I was hearing. Mm. And I can witness that narrative in myself. I mean, this is the thing, right? When you're born into privilege, it's constantly a process of going, whoa, holy moly, there's my privilege again. Whoa, <laughs> let me just like check that for a minute and work out what I want to do here consciously Mm, yeah what is your secret or how do you see it that we're able to balance that disassociation of privilege versus having a heart that's open to connect to another mother over the other side of the world having completely different lived experience Mm. I would also add another version of what the dissociation looks like from and like what another like protective mechanism looks like which is immediately intellectualizing it Mm. and kind of saying like which is lots of people doing like the lots of people saying oh this is all just you know look into the world economic forum it's totally rigged this is you know this is you know this was always planned this was always a plan to kind of you know overtake your ukraine and they're all kind of interconnected and you know people pushing that kind of narrative as if to say wake up you know you don't even know how this is, you know, you're another sheep because you don't understand the context of this and you're buying into it. What that very thing does is completely disconnect from the human experience, which whether you're right or wrong is beside the point because people are still dying. Mothers are still putting their kids to sleep in bomb shelters. Mm -hmm. So I don't really give a fuck whether you think it's a conspiracy theory or it's a completely legitimate response by the Western nations, the human impact is mm-hmm. the same. Mm-hmm. But what can happen as, as a way to not feel that there can be this kind of self-righteous, mm-hmm. and it happens on both sides, it happens on the conspiracy theory side versus the geopolitical expert who, you know, can't stand Russia and all of that, Right. On both sides, they both invite you to not feel 
to skim over the harm to skim over the harm Mm. and so what helps me keep my heart open is a lot of what my post said which was just actually put it trying for a second to put myself in what that might be like as a lived experience you know of like there's mothers that look just like me like there's a mother that had her baby in like you know an ergo carrier with a little beanie on like hopping on like hopping to climb down to the, you know, to the subway, right? Like these are mothers who move about their day the way that you move about your day. Yesterday that's what they were doing. Today they're going to seek shelter from bombs. Mm. And I think it's the practice of seeing yourself in that person that allows you to open your heart and let it flow through you as opposed to let the walls come up and dissociate from whatever mind habit you want to, whether that's the overwhelm and I just can't handle it or it's the I know all the answers, therefore, you know, rough, 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 like whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, I get it. So how are you finding yourself? I guess the, the question really is how do you find yourself as a Western white woman of privilege sitting with, as your post said, the juxtaposition of, I'm, I'm practicing and consciously consuming media and practicing opening my heart and feeling another human's lived experience mm-hmm. with, you know, oh, look at my daughter washing my brand new car. And mm-hmm. you just, I don't know, wrote your first sentence at school. That's incredible. Yeah. But how are you as a human doing, doing that? that? There's a bit of, there's a bit of compartmentalization. Like, so I think it was maybe Saturday. I don't know when it was, but my older kids are busy doing something in my toddler had a nap so I thought okay I have some time here without responsibility for children so I'm gonna have a look I'm gonna delve into it I'm gonna be moved by this <coughs> excuse me and that was when you know I allowed myself to watch things and feel it and not look away and that was almost like my my um pocket of time that I dedicated to being moved by it that I so then I could be fully in it I wasn't like trying to parent and trying to watch this and therefore because I've got like one eye on my child I'm not letting myself be actually moved by this I'm kind of not with it so powerful because you kind of can't be because if you're conscious of 100 you know, like, but I know, just love that you pulled that out <laughs> You know, like I wasn't even thinking about it until you said that. And I'm like, oh, my God, yeah, mm. of course. Yeah, because you I'm, I'm not all there when I'm also cooking the dinner and getting the snacks and getting asked for this. Like I'm not all there. Yeah. So I think that conscious creation of time is helpful. And then because I've allowed it to move me and I feel like I've connected to it and then I can then move about my day and, and reconcile the parts of me that feels the privilege or feels like that, um, like who am I to complain about this? Because I think, we all, my, yeah, yeah, because we can care about what's going on in the world and also have our own challenges that, yes, might pale in comparison because we're human. We don't want to mm. negate our challenge because there's also greater challenge out in the world Mm. like being able just to be with both rather than passing judgment shaming or shutting up or shutting down yeah one just actually what your the invitation that I hear from you is just actually create time to sit in both yeah to actually and which is which is like that sitting in that like liminal space in between or being in that complexity and noticing the parts of you that want to leave it or want to resolve the tension of it and just practice staying there a little bit longer. Mm. That's such beautiful advice. Mm. So, yeah, it's not a podcast with answers. It's just a podcast with invitations, this one, isn't it? It's like yeah, we don't have to have the answers for this. And what I've also found myself doing is connecting with, you know, friends of mine who perhaps might have grown up in Ukraine or I've got other friends who grew up in Poland and just as a way to kind of understand the way of life in many of these um, Eastern European countries and the context with which the people are responding in the way that they're responding so that I can, 
feel into and become more aware Mm. as well. And that helps to also understand these people's lived experience a little bit more. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much for, one, putting words to an experience that perhaps many of us couldn't, but also just for offering us just a moment to pause and reflect and decide how we wish to consciously move forwards Mm. and how we hold ourselves and be in our lived experience of moving forwards and knowing that has ripples then onto our kids' lived experience as well. So I just also want to say thank you for the invitation just to open it up. Thank you. And I want to add too, there's a um there's lots of ways to obviously contribute to the to this issue. Like you, you can reach out to people who have family there. Like I dropped a friend, I've dropped a bunch of flowers off to a friend of mine whose family's Ukrainian and and you might just ch- choose to give to the Red Cross. But I would also notice the part of you that um you know, if your urge is to just give all of this, also notice well what's that like what are you not feeling in immediately just giving? Because mm. sometimes we can just give something and feel like, oh, we've done our thing. I don't have to feel that anymore. Whereas I think we need to moderate that too. Like, of course, be generous and do whatever, what, like, even whatever way feels meaningful to you, but also notice um, what comes up in you when, when that's, if that's your reflex as well. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Bridgie. So we love and invite any conversation you have on reflections of our podcast or if you would like us to dive into a particular content or topic or question, so please reach out to us at nourishingthemother.com.au or Nourishing the Mother on Instagram and Facebook. And to connect with you, Bridget? Yeah, it's bridgetwood.life. And you, Jules? Is julietenner.love. Remember to nourish the woman to rock the family. And we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. Thank you so much for listening. We literally couldn't do this without you. Please share this podcast with anyone you think it would be medicine for. If you desire to integrate your learnings practically and supportively into your life, then head on over to bridgetwood.life or julietenner.love to go deeper. And if you feel like giving back a little to this free content, Please rate us on iTunes or Facebook, all of which helps the podcast reach more mamas who need this type of tonic for the soul. This has been a production of thewellnesscouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on facebook.com forward slash thewellnesscouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst the Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of the Wellness Couch podcasts.